Okay, it's working. All right, Dan from his car, I can talk. So who am I? I'm Zach Zappas. I think most of you know me if you don't. Um, president of Suck IC. I uh, work for First Circular doing security things. Um, I have a friend named Will. I was going to look at the camera and give a shout out to Will, but the camera's not working except for audio, so sorry, Will. Um, his official title is an alcohol-fueled high-voltage wizard. Um, and Will is, uh, has definitely influenced and spurred my cybersecurity uh, uh, you know, interests hardcore. Um, a lot of you probably don't know Will unless you go to the cons. Will's a baggage handler for uh, Southwest, I think it is. And he just gets free airline flights through work. So he travels to like everywhere and does all the cons. Now he's running like car hacking villages and soldering things at Torque Hand and blowing stuff up with Tesla coils and stuff. I mean, it's wild. Uh, so that's, you know, a uh, barrier of entry, right? Anybody can do this kind of stuff. Uh, similarly, I am not an expert by any means in car hacking or otherwise, despite what may have been said during advertising season. So, and yeah, sec IC, not IC sec, but yeah. Um, seriously, to pay and I, to pay and I sat down at Kirkon because there weren't enough seats at our CTF team's table. And we wound up winning second place by just bashing our heads against trigger not bash trips and shit for this. Like in an afternoon, right? Anybody can learn this. And uh, I plan to teach you guys how to. That's me down at the bottom there. It's a little Fox team. So what is car hacking? It's like hacking with other stuff but with cars instead. Same basic principle. Uh, good place to start is the CAN bus. <coughs> uh, so to start, does everyone know what a bus network is, like how a bus operates? Some nods, some still heads. So a bus network, if you look at, uh, I'm not constrained by the camera, if you look at either end of that, uh, that fat pipe there, you can think of that as like a continuous circle back to itself, right? So uh, a bus network is everything kind of lives on the same area and talks to everything at the same time. Well, that's a misnomer talks to everything on that bus network. So in modern cars, right, um, CAN's the protocol, the base protocol that a lot of the stuff uses and it runs on the CAN bus itself. Um, the CAN bus protocol is used in not only automotive but manufacturing as well. Um, generally, it can be used for ICS kind of things as well. Um, just basic uh, implemented controller stuff. And that's really what's inside your car is just a bunch of implemented controllers, right? Just ECUs, electronic control units. They're all doing different things in the car uh, at different pieces of the car and monitoring diff different stuff, but they're all talking to each other on that same bus network. Um, all modern cars, especially more modern, like very new cars, uh, are all fly by wire, right? So you turn the steering wheel, that's just sending signals. You're not having a direct linkage control anymore unless you have a fancy car. Um, but yeah, so like acceleration, you know, deceleration, these are all things that are controlled by mitigating factors in the car, traction control. Um, all of this stuff is affected by different, or co connected to the CAN bus and is controlled by different ECUs on the systems. Um, the CAN bus standard was created back in 1996, I want to say it was, uh, but it didn't become mandatory until 2008 in the US. Um, there's a fair chance that if your car is older than 2008, it might have CAN bus. Jump on it and try. Um, but how it works, so if you hook up like an oscilloscope to the OBD, the uh, uh, onboard diagnostic port, uh, to the specific two wires, you'll see something like this. Uh, CAN runs off of, again, two wire system and it uses differential signaling. So you have a CAN high wire and a CAN low wire, and then both of those wires are connected again to every device on, the, on that network. And as things send, they use a differential signal. So CAN high will go higher by, I think it's 2.5 volts. Again. Not an expert, right? Uh, can low will lower that voltage by the same 2.5 volts. And so long as those two are matching, there's probably no collisions on the line of a new spot. But when you hook it up again to an oscilloscope or something and you look at it, you're gonna see these kind of square wave patterns as bit on, bit off, bit on, bit off. Let's see if I miss anything. Nope. So can packet layout. Uh, can you know the can networking right? It's bits and bytes on on the network. This is kind of a better display of uh, the actual differential signaling when they break it out. So your ones are kind of closed loops, right? The differential signals both change to uh, the same one, and then as they open, they're zeros. Um, 
And but going through the package itself, um, so the Canvas protocol you can use uh, once you set up like a, a, a can sniffer and actually capture packets in Wireshark or something. We're not going to do that tonight. We'll get to that at the next talk. Talk. Uh, but the first part there, the attribution ID. <clears throat> uh, so that's the broadcast message identifier, right? So everything lives on that Canvas network, and it's all talking to each other or different pieces of each other at different times. But it's a closed loop network, so everything's talking together. Uh, the way they identify themselves is by attribution ID or arbitration ID, rather. Attribution will work better. Uh, but uh, there's also a priority mix of uh, three bits in there as well. Uh, the priority system to prevent, uh, you know, you're, you're in a car, right? You have all these electrical units going on. You're going down the highway at 95, radio's blurring, got an automatic transmission shit shifting, a lot of stuff going on. If one of those pieces fail, it needs to come back immediately. Otherwise, there's going to be like devastating consequences. So, uh, the priority send system works off of a, a three bit known uh, naming, naming scheme. And those three bits, uh, priority is sent to the lowest. So, if you send an RIB ID with all zeros as the, the first header, everything on that bus will listen to that, see if it's for it. If not, just comes. Uh, but then you go, you know, all, all zeros to all ones, one, one, one. Um, and any set in between there is a different priority set. We're probably not going to get into that tonight. <clears throat> uh, the IDE or the identifier extension, uh, this bit is almost always zero on uh, standard CAN traffic. Uh, so again, CAN is that bus network, right? We'll keep that in mind for the next slide coming up and for that uh, identifier extension. Uh, the data length code will tell you how many bits is coming up in the, in the next half of the packet. Uh, max on standard CAN is eight bits. Um, so you can have anywhere from zero to eight bits. And because it's their uh, uh, electronic control systems, a zero can mean something. So if you send an R by D out with nothing on it to something specific, that could be an indicator to that device to do something else. And then the data, you know, data fills out the end of the frame there. It's, you know, what you're actually sending. So types of CAN frames. Again, like I was saying, the CAN, the CAN bus system is a closed loop, right? But all these different types of framing systems work on CAN. So you have extended CAN package, which goes to like, oh, I should have looked it up. I want to say like 4,200 bits or so. So way bigger than eight bits. Um, ISOTP protocol, uh, CAN open protocol, GML LAN, uh, SAJ 1850, and there's more than are on this slide. There's a lot going on in colors, but we're going to focus just on the uh, just on the CAN, the basic CAN protocol. So connection methods again: the OBD2 onboard diagnostics two, um, standard 1996, 2008 was the actual standardization for the U.S. Um, but that's where you connect. If you're sitting at your driver's wheel, uh, left side, right side, kind of about where your knees are. You'll see an odd shaped port that looks very much like that. And that's where you plug in. And there <clears throat> are a bunch of different ways to connect to this. Everyone's got their own method. Uh, there's, you know, uh, this is a can serial. So we have a serial coming out or a can that connects two parts of serial, then serial to USB, so USB can. Uh, Arduino is another great methodology because and Arduino is like what six six bucks eight bucks now. They make a can shield add-on that bolts right on the top for another twelve bucks or so, and then you can just pin out serial to ODB yourself, ODB, and and jump right on. Um, our sponsors tonight, Macina, make an awesome little product that's somewhat open source for the programming itself. Uh, the hardware itself is closed source, but they have again like there's been a different shield that you can pop on. Uh, the one I have here is uh, two USB or two card SD in it, so I can dump to a card when I take a drive, come back and reverse it at the shop rather than on the fly, or I can do it on the fly. Uh, they also have plugins for like SIM and uh, GSIM satellite stuff, so you can essentially design your own turn by turn navigation in your own car if you wanted to. Uh, we won't be doing that stuff. So let's connect. Is anyone actually following along for the? Uh, with me on the two up front. Yeah, you guys are going to get the most out of tonight.
impossible to see up there. It's impossible to see up there. It's at just the right angle. Yeah. Oh, this is terrible. It's my worst nightmare. Which one's the most green? Right there, yep. Well, we're not going to do that. So I made a car hack from VM that you guys can follow along with. Obviously, if you don't have it with you tonight, you can't follow along. But we're recording. It's going to have audio and probably that screen, I think. Yeah, that screen. So you can follow along with the video as you go. You want to double check on that, Matt? Yep. You're screwed up. Okay, good. Yay. Um, so car hacking is the username, hacking cars, all lowercase, hacking car, just the reverse. Keep it nice and simple. Actually. So what I'm going to go through and show you guys tonight is um, how to set up a virtual uh, instance of a car. So we're going to set up an uh, IC sim, which is one of the tools we'll be using, uh, instrument cluster simulator. And that will give us essentially an instrument cluster in the CAN bus that we can use to, uh, to actually virtualize car hacking for ourselves. Uh, you can certainly you know, get one of these products, plug right into your car and go. Um, if you're you know, doing reverse engineering and fuzzing in general, there's a fair chance that you can hit just the right switch and pop the car into the garage, into the living room, and wherever. Uh, so I say start virtual. Also starting virtual, it kind of just gives you like an overall better idea of what's going on, right? Uh, included in the virtual machine is, on the left hand side up there somewhere, is the uh, uh, car hacking handbook. Uh, so you guys can use that link too. You just jump right in there. Um, but yeah, I, 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 if you're interested in car hacking, I would suggest reading the car hacking handbook. Um, to me, the car hacker's handbook reads more like a red team field manual or a blue team field manual. Like, if you're not, if you have no idea what's going on and you just sit down and read this book, you'll have a lot of good information. You're still not going to have any idea what's going on. The hands on is when this stuff kind of starts making a lot more sense. So, the main tools we'll be using uh, Socket Can, which is Can Utils that was built into the Linux, it was built into the Linux kernel in like 2.6 or something, so 2010, somewhere in there, maybe. Um, but Socket Can itself, like the Can Utils, was made by uh, uh, the Volkswagen Corporation back in the 80s. Um, it was formerly low level CAN framework, and they kind of repackaged it for Linux. Uh, again, the other thing we'll be using is IC Sim, and that's the instrument cluster simulator. Um, that's done by Open Garage's Craze Zombies or something like that on GitHub. Um, I'll have links and stuff for everything if you want to toy around in it at home. Or just go download the VM, it's easier. Um, so we'll just jump into it here. Seriously, go out and download the VM. I remember the first time we worked on this. I mean, it took us yeah. practically a day to get to the house. Oh, yeah. The, the first time we went home, we were back to the, the um, Airbnb. Airbnb. We just sat on our phones reading white papers like how to car hack. Um, again, it's all really good information, but like, unless you're paying attention to what's going on, you're not really going to have a clue as to what's going on. Um, so for those following along, CD into the desktop, ICS Master Sim. Uh, there'll be a script set up VCAN that show. Uh, Boom. Use the Cali. Uh, so what that shell script does is there's another set of backend utilities that I've already loaded up in the VM. That's why the VM is easier. Uh, but what we're doing is the VPN shell, obviously. We're setting up our CAN bus on our local network and creating a virtualized local network interface for it. So after you run that, run an IF config, and you'll see a VPN to zero interface that now exists for you. That'll be what we wind up using. That would have one. 
So, bear with me. Uh, now we'll go ahead and build the instrument cluster. So again, run. Uh, we shouldn't need sudo for anything on this one. Uh, IC sim. Uh, IC sim comes with. Oh, there you go. Boom. A couple of things. So you can uh, set a seed value, and that's what we did tonight. We just set a seed value of zero, so we're all working off the same base. We're all reverse engineering the same stuff. Uh, but you can set a seed value if you just run it yourself uh, with the pull command. It'll make it will generate its own seed value, so you get a different instrument cluster experience every time. Uh, debug mode, I've never even actually used it. And dash R will randomize the IDs, kind of make things a little bit more difficult for you. Uh, but the actual command here would be icsim and then dash seed zero. And then you're going to give it your virtual interface of can zero. And boom! We have a little bit of uh, a little cluster here. So. And it's up there up in the corner. Uh, and then I suggest putting Terminator, because uh, that tends to be easier to get everything kind of organized. Uh, for those that aren't aware of Terminator or what Terminator is, it's just a, uh, a terminal session cluster, essentially. You can uh, cut out multiple, multiple shells into one. One nice little screen. So Maybe yeah, look about it. Right. So now I got two and three is what I usually work. So roll this up. That for and stuff. All right, so we'll put this right in the center here. So this is our virtualized instrument cluster, right? This is running in the background. There's already a R by D set to it. This is essentially what you could do if you sat down behind your car. Uh, now, this is what you would do if you sat down behind your cluster itself. You can pull the cluster out and do it manually without the actual rest of the car and everything. Um, but this will at least give us something virtual to kind of hack on. Um, so from here, we literally just start hacking. Uh, now we're going to start using all the can util tools that are built in uh, to the kernel. Uh, car hacking at this level, like what we're going to be looking at and doing tonight, is, in all honesty, reverse engineering and essentially packet ins inspection. Um, and we're not actually going to even do packet inspection. We're going to watch the can from the can dump itself. So we're really just reverse engineering from, you know, from the live. Um, so on the left-hand screen, I suggest doing a can dump. Tell me when you can see it. Can you see it? Anybody? Somebody? Yes. Hey, thank you. So can dump will explain to you what's going on here. But we don't really need it. So we're going to can dump. Just do a can dump straight. A uh, couple C's to add some color changes to it. And then VCAN zero to monitor the active CAN bus. So because we're just monitoring, uh, or because we're just running uh, the IC SIM itself, there's a second program we'll get into here in a little bit that will actually virtualize an entire car running in the background. Uh, but because we're just looking at the SIM itself, the cluster itself, there's nothing on the CAN right now. There's no CAN track. Um, so in the second one up here, we're going to do a CAN dump. Dash lowercase l to a log file, and then specify your can. Correctly. And so now we have a can file that that is generated in that folder that we're watching. And we'll get back to this later. Uh, but what we're doing on the left hand side is we're watching the actual can itself. Uh, top right, we're dumping everything that's coming out of that can into a log file to replay later. Stick it to the door. All right. And so the fun stuff really starts now. On that bottom right hand panel, uh, we're going to use ourselves uh, can gen. And we'll just give you a display of what, what the fun bits of can gen are. Uh, so can gen is a uh, can packet generator, hence can gen. I got the nonsense, sorry. There we go. Uh, 
right, so can Jen? Well, scroll and stop. But anyway, um, so can gen, uh, uh, can packet generator. A uh, couple commands we can run in here. Dash I is for our auto attrition ID. I for ID. Uh, dash D for the data that comes afterwards. You can randomize both uh, the ARB IDs and the generated data. Uh, so we're doing basic reverse engineering like this. I'd say uh, start with incrementing the ARB IDs. So we're starting all zeros going up to 7 and F. Uh, and then we'll start kind of reversing from there. So can gen, we do dash capital I, lowercase i for incremental. We're gonna be data, dash D. Uh, let's be to the specific fox, 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 fox. Uh, we'll do a length of two, because we're only sending two bits there. Or not two bits, two parts of the backup. Uh, and vcan0 is where we're going to send it to. So on the left, you can see that we're sending those packets out onto the CAN bus itself. Uh, we're going to come right here, and it has G20. We're going to add a shorter delay in milliseconds. And so what we're going to do, because I'm going to explain this now, because I'm going to go over front range pretty quick. Uh, so we're sending uh, a couple close bits to the CAN network. And uh, iterating through everything on the ARP ID, right? We're setting every, every possible combination of device identifiers to the bus and seeing if the data we sent to it knows anything. So, excuse me, when we hit go, we'll watch the instrument cluster, and essentially we're just going to watch for anything to change. When it does change, we'll hop back up here um, and stop down our cam, cam dump log and our cam generator. We did wait watch. Something will eventually, boom, oh, there you go. So we got caution lights on and we ejected everybody from the car. Uh, it looked like caution lights came first. I wasn't really paying attention. <laughs> Probably not the best thing to say. Uh, so stop in the can gen and now the fun part begins. So we come up to the can dump, stop that down as well. Uh, I suggest editing it because it's going to be faster to do it like this even though it's miraculously small. Um, so from here, we kind of use the rule of 50s. Uh, it's an old engineering technique of cutting any problem 50%, right? Is it from the outside? Is it from the inside? Cut it, cut it in half there. All right, it's in the inside. So where is it the inside? Is it a physical problem? Is it a virtual problem? Let's figure it out. Cut it in half from there. Uh, similar kind of thing here. So we have, what do we have? 500 lines? Almost 600? Five, maybe something? So we'll come up to really small text. I should have worn my glasses. Two forty. Looks good. So we'll take two forty and above. All of it though, it otherwise. We cut it and save it. And the reason we cut it is because when we play this back, if it doesn't work, we're going to go back through and add what we cut it out back to. So can jam, can dump still going. Um, we'll do a little cheater here. Um, do can jam five. Or G5, sorry. Change your Fs to Os. And we'll reset the cluster real quick. Alright. So we got, oh, well, we didn't reset the doors, but we're not worried about the original. Alright, so now we come back here. Uh, we got our cluster reset, so we turn our caution lights off. Uh, now we're going to use can player. So what can player will do, it'll read. Can I get the pin here? Yeah. Can player will read that uh, can dump back uh, at the file that was created and iterate through it and replay it all. Um, so if you're not doing this virtually, like with Mac and M2, you got to dump in your SD card and take a drive around town, you can come home and replay your entire drive in the can player and watch what's going on in your car. 
Oh, where are the mechanic later, man? Advanced. Okay. I think it's just can player input file can zero. Let's see what we do. Um, Okay. Oh, my scroll's not working there. Yeah, input file. All right, so we'll do CanGen. I don't remember what that input file is called, so command, tap complete. And then we can zero. Yeah. I know I would turn on that. Let me can't play there. Dash time. There we go. Yeah, it popped though, so we know it's in that file, that half of the file. Uh, so the camp player stopped. Sorry, I was on the wrong command when I tried to run it. Uh, so now that we have that there, we can uh, pop back to our can gen, the ball zeros, and reset real quick. So down. We still have it open in the background, so we can come through and kind of. I don't even get it. I don't know, we'll take like, I don't know. That much of it off. No, we won't because that was somewhere in the middle of the file. Start at the bottom. Looks like 200 something, so we'll come up to. Uh, 100 and change. Give or take. And again, kind of the whole, the whole wonderful experience of car hacking is reverse engineering, right? We're just kind of all making this up as we go. So we changed it, took off about half cut around 100 and some odd lines off of it. And then we'll come back, can play the file again, and watch to see if it changes. Didn't change, so it's in the half that I cut off. So I pasted that half back in there, saved it, ran it again, it loops. And it's still running, so That ran for a good bit afterwards. Uh, so I was watching can dump kind of in the background and it looked like it still ran for a bit after the lights came on. So I'm gonna cut from the bottom again. If I can get my mouse button. There it goes, good. Again, we'll clear the, clear the board again, if you will. Uh -huh. And then replay that file. Finished. 10, 15 lines after it finished. So I think from this time, I'm going to cut from the top. Control right save. And this is it. So if you like bashing your face against really obnoxious problems, this is right up your alley. All right, so that looks like it's pretty close to the bottom. Reset the board. Put the file pretty close to the bottom, so we come up. So that many. I played it. That was like right off the bat. 
So let's hear the word out. Anyone bored yet? <laughs> Go right, right there, because that looks. I don't know what happened. Let's try that. Hmm. That's pretty quick. So I think we're close to the top. So have I bored anyone away from car hacking yet? I hear a lot of silence. I'm taking it as a yes. So we can't play again. Is it? One there. So we'll cut the other half back, or face the other half back, and try that. One there either. So we lost the game over. <laughs> so now we'll do it again, and it'll work. Hey! Again, that was pretty quick, so I'll cut from the bottom. And I'll, honestly, this is really into the virtual stuff. It's terrible. I mean, it's really fun if you want to nerd out on stuff like this, right? But, it's good to get out. So it's there. What IDs do we have, Kirk? Can anybody see that? 188. 88, 89, and 18A. So I feel like 89 is going to be our lucky number. I'm just going to cut the first one. Push the board real quick. Come on. So that's the exact one I cut out. So the good news is we removed the other two possibilities on the first card. Boom. All right. Hey. hey. All right. So what was that one, Matt? Can you read that out to me? 188. 188. All right. So now that we have the R by D isolated, we can fudge the fudge the package around a little bit and have some fun. So can send is the other command. Uh, can send will let you send a specific packet rather than generating a string of different ones. So uh, can send your, your ID, so your three numbers, uh, pound, and then you know your packet down. So in this one you said 89 Matt? 88. 88. So 88 pound, we know that zeros will turn them off. Just put a pound in there. That's on. Dude, I am on, on the ball. Okay, zero. And we missed something magical because it was. Okay. Oh, device first. My bad. This one's backwards. This is the one that's backwards. So V can zero, then it backwards. So we can turn them off. We can turn the lights on. We can turn them off. We can turn them on. Anyway, uh, so now we just kind of fudge around. Like, what, what else can we do? Let's cut it down to one packet. All right, so one's enough for those two lights in this instance. We can turn them off. So, there you go. Left on. Um, uh, two. Hey, two only. That worked out well. Two A. Ten zeros. I bet it'll still work. So yeah, see. So the odd thing is, reverse engineering it this way, right? We're kind of breaking it down from the base level. So zero two got us our right turn signal on, but zero A also got us the right turn signal on. So that's an indicator that something else on that network will use one of those two indicators and it'll be different than something else on that network. So your caution lights, you know, turn signals, things like that. All right, so that's, that's yep, yep. Uh, so that's kind of the basics of, of how to reverse engineer through the ground model. Uh, to kind of step the game up and to be more realistic to what it's actually gonna look like, 
You pop the terminal back open, control shift T. Um, I think it's control. So controls is the second half of the IC setter. And what this does is this gives you uh, not only a physical control that you can, you can implement and use, but it gives you background traffic. So this is going to be more realistic as to what's going on if you were to plug into your car. So again, think about how tedious our last job of just trying to get one light was. Watch how fun, fun it's about to get. So our seed value is zero uh, from, from the seed that we generated when we started. Difficulty dash L, we can just do zero for now, which is the lowest difficulty level. Right. Yeah, uh, traffic files can be used with better because they're not replying, and stable background traffic is cheating. That's so. What we're doing now is essentially what Dash X does. There's no background traffic, but we want background traffic. Um, so once we hit go, it's going to bring up this next new screen. So the cool thing about this package is you can plug in a controller, pretty much any USB controller. And it gives you four different door, door controls, turn signals left, right, locks, uh, acceleration, and brakes. And you can toy around and send those packets as if you were sitting in a car pushing those actual buttons or you know, giggles or dashes on your car, and then try and replay them yourself. The reason they give you that ability is because, and this was the lowest difficulty setting, this is what a can looks like. And this is what a can from like 96 looks like. A modern can is just full of puke constantly. There is so much stuff going on. So yeah, that's background noise. So now if we do like a can, uh, can gem, on top of that, and start iterating through. Set it back to 20. Set it back to an S, and then we get to, dude, what is going on? All right, stand up. Uh, wait, one, one. Oh, I ruined it. So now we're injecting our packets in with the background draft and recording all that shit in between. We're not actually recording it. Yeah, it's really fun. You'll see, like, when this happens, you'll get, you know, some type of indicator, like, hey, you got something happened, and before you even figure it out, you know, that other traffic on the bus started wiping out, you know, what, what, what took the place, you know, what's the way. So there's a rough 10 seconds of CAN bus traffic while we're injecting in the background. Which one's bigger, man? Eight. And that's what our new log file looks like. And it goes, 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 goes. So then you get to start cutting all that shit down. <laughs> and whittling down back from there. So that's, I mean, that's kind of the basics of car hacking. The other fun, fun thing we can do, that's what we got. Let's go. Set that five. Get rid of length requirement and set it as random. Oh no, I'm going to move everything quickly. And set our art IDs to random. And now we're just fuzzing. Now we're just throwing a bunch of shit in there all together. And things will start lighting up and changing and having fun eventually. Oh yeah, now we're just making more background noise. There you go, doors are shut and things. So yeah, I mean, so that's kind of... Great in car hacking, I mean, it's difficult to just plug the bus. Yeah. Just trying to get made into the top box. Yeah, so what you'll get is people will notice G20 is pretty easy to read. So they'll drop down to G10 and that's... It's pretty hard to play, but you can still do some stuff on it. Yeah. So they'll drop it down to like G5, like what we're at now. Five milliseconds on a bus with like eight other people on the same GPG land or on the same uh, scan bus. Yeah, it'll backlog it so hard that like once they stop, it'll still roll the data. So that's board up everybody. It's terrible. Ten euros on here, happy. Yeah. 
Yeah. We'll just have to like sit there and wait. Yeah, she's got to wait for it all to clear. She just catches. Well, yeah. So that's uh, that's car hacking. Uh, can dump does it? Can snipper is the other one that you can run, and that one's a lot more configurable. Um, we didn't get into a lot of like the. Uh, Nets and bolts of like extended cam, uh, extended cam packets and stuff, but that's how the actual diagnostics work. Like really, we just scrape scrape the top model on the first engineering. Um, all the all the diagnostics work off of extended cam uh, cam frame packets. So you can set your code sniffer to look specifically for responses. Response times is forty days lower than certain broadcasts. Like there's a lot of nuances, and I have multiple more talks to, to go through. By the end of it, hopefully, you'll be able. To Wire car like an outcome or something. Is this Kansas still like the same for all car manufacturers? Yeah. Yeah. So that's in the US or worldwide? US uh, in 2008, worldwide, yes. I don't know the date, but I saw that stuff. It's the same standard, but it's a standard. Uh, different manufacturers that may be a different car. Uh, it's kind of fun. Well, if you have one, so the manufacturers are going to get that information out. And all of the cars are going to be allowed to process the last year. And they'll get this out there. Yeah, I mean, even the first place, getting to the point where you can go off the internet. Google your car, and you might be able to buy it. Do you get your car? I've done some stuff on my car. Is, that right? Right? Is there a danger to do this on your car? Like, you, you can break something? You can break you, your car. Oh, you can break your car. That cable, uh, yeah. Yeah. You can break your car. There, there, car. there is, there <laughs> is <laughs> danger if you're just like fuzzing things wildly. Um, oh, I'll let the past few of you get this shit. <laughs> PG-13, I get one, right? Uh, yeah, you can If you're going to do it on your own, walk it up, for yeah. sure. Because if you have not had it, there's a chance you can send the hey, I'm going to put it to your signal as well as accelerate across and do that. That's why I was like, oh, I'm going to if you want to play with the Tesla and you have one, you can register with them and they essentially have like an on call cache that you can, you can call at any time and let them recharge the car for you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions on this stuff? This what we covered here specifically? Uh, can you inform that this the wire chip support can? Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, well, so to uh, <laughs> sometimes have to figure out what that ID is when you're actually got one in front of you. Yeah, every time. Right. Yeah, so there are always standards. Like, that, I mean, that's on top of this. And, you know, like getting the show. Right? Yep, yeah. That, so the C value that you enter is just like if you guys are playing around on the same one or version here together. Um, you, it'll create a generator NFC every time. With some of the RIDs kind of different. Um, there are, Matt was saying earlier, there are generally standards for some stuff that like manufacturing, you know, it runs in both systems. So similarly, like all engine control stuff is on the seven clock in that And then it responds differently. But where and what it responds to pattern wise is different from other pattern. And it's all provided for As far as I can. I mean, obviously, this is what's off. But a 2002 Jetta could have an RBD that we just found with the turn signal, and a 2008 would be different. Any other questions? Was this interesting? There's a lot more shit to this, and I have other talks queued up if you guys want to hear. But I definitely won't keep getting this recorded. Did you ever touch based on the number? Yeah. 
Anybody ever said that? <laughs> Theoretically, or <laughs> we have the same challenge now. For if we can roll with All right. Yeah. Theoretically. Uh, but yeah, you know, numbers, so, so certain models of cars, like there was one which I once had, I think last week or something, uh, a certain Jaguar model to get the cluster to turn on and start, you had to send it a constant 7 Echo 5 packet or something, which cost nothing. Right? That just had to be running because that's another part of the car that only runs the car that's on. So with that, you plug that whole thing in and just not know that and have a cluster that never is. So similarly, like reverse engineering any of those things. This is a lot of companies that need your arm. My car, if I pull the engine out, there's a gas in the morning. Yeah, like the whole deck. Like I can still drive the car, but the domino or the tackle or something. Oh, first of all, yeah. Yeah, inversely, if somebody pulls out, it's going to have a thing. It's got some like comparing. Yeah, no, 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 uh, the Wi Fi connection in itself uh, had a single Wi Fi, so they could then match it to that bar. So they got into that idea. Uh, from the head unit itself, itself, these can't be trusted in there instead of from the front. So it is kind of a separation, right? I think the head unit is going to be. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, EP is a great